Game two of this series was a classic tale of two halves. In the first, there wasn't a great deal of variance compared to the first game as far as Brooklyn's coverages. You know, some matchups changed, but a couple of things happened which worked in Brooklyn's favor. Keep your eye on the defense here as Dorian Finney picks and pops. Brooklyn spread five out. They deployed smaller lineups early, which allowed them to increase the pace and generate shots better suited for their style. They played James Harden physically with the handful of different bodies and a lack of calls from the tip on seemed to have a negative lasting effect on his game. He, Tobias, and PJ would combine for nine first half points on six of 18 shooting. Harden and Embiid would turn the rock over nine times in that first half compared to Brooklyn's four. Now they were due for an inevitable shooting regression, but really it was their carelessness with the rock and an identity crisis against Brooklyn's smaller lineups, which kept them in the mud. Now I portrayed the first half as overwhelmingly negative, which it was, but in hindsight, there were some positive trends. In a series where the opponent's game plan revolves around making and beats life hell, limiting or taking away his scoring, he's finding ways to control and dominate the game everywhere else. You see him fill the paint to stop the drive short, put a body on clacks, and collect the board. You're going to see Dinwiddie put him in the pick and roll. He defends the drive and the roll. And when the shot goes up, he finds Claxton and grabs it off the glass. He had 15 first half rebounds in a game where they had a plus 23 rebounding advantage. And the one hooper who kept their offense afloat in that first half, largely because he capitalized on those possessions where Brooklyn doubled Embiid, was Tyrese Maxey. 15 first half points on six of eight shooting. He got into a good rhythm, which would translate to the second and make Brooklyn think twice about doubling off. So we got our first side of the story. Now here's the other side. They open this half with a miss. The Nets score immediately. So Doc calls a timeout to calm things down. And from that point on, their offense was good money. And B welcomes the double from the corner. Maxi misses. PJ stays with the play and gives him the two for one opportunity. They experiment with a 2-3 zone, which means Brooklyn can't just freelance. That leads to a careless turnover, and now they've woken up. Let's get surgical. Tobias takes Dinwiddie in the post and then passes out to Embiid, who is facing the basket, which is important here because he sees that double coming on his right. He counters by driving to his left and gets too deep to stop. So you've got him be middle of the floor and the double comes on the catch off of the weak side corner. And Bede as a result looks, the Cal Bridges off to that corner and passes to the opposite corner. The Nets have to rotate, which PJ uses to his team's advantage. Now keep this in mind, the two three zone was able to alter Brooklyn's offense because they can't just put Embiid in the pick and roll. They can't just run around and do as they please. They're getting the ball in different spots, and they got to move it more. So the Sixers were able to use this to make them uncomfortable and get some stops as their own offense was beginning to open up. Double one pass away, extra pass to the corner. Now do me a favor. Keep an eye on Spencer Dinwiddie at the top of your screen. Mikael leaves the dunker. He rotates down. Tobias finds the open man, and that man happens to be in rhythm already. Listen, it's a make or miss league. This was falling in the first half. Second half, it wasn't. Back to the O for a bit. As they move the rock around the perimeter, watch the baseline. Dorian Finney leaves PJ to rotate. Maxi puts it on the deck and finds the blind spot. PJ misses, but he follows his shot and James does the rest. Stay with me here. You gotta keep up with four different hoopers. You've got Embiid in the high post, and James sends Tobias to the far side corner. That's first. Now, as he fulfills his responsibility, Mikhail's ball watching, and Dinwiddie doubles Embiid on the catch off of PJ in the dunker. 
As long as MB reads this, it's a two on one down there. PJ wisely gets in the way of Mikhail, and Tobias squares up the trip. As this third quarter winds down, Embiid in their defense comes up with some crucial stops, which helps them create separation. Mikhail's got what appears to be a favorable matchup against Niang. So the Sixers double him and force the ball out of his hands. He gets the once again, but Niang cuts off the drive and forces a turnover. Inbounds to Dorian Finney, five to shoot. Now watch Embiid play suffocating defense in space. Let's go to the fourth. Brooklyn's defense recalibrates here, which allows Embiid to catch, face the basket, and go. Similar to earlier, that double comes from the right, so he counters by driving to his left. Notice how he displaces Mikhail. Maxi intelligently relocates, and Mikhail, because he followed Embiid, has got no idea where Maxi is. Brother, he's at the ATM. I hope so. You know what? Let me stop. Change the pace drive to... Brother, watch Embiid. Oh you, oh, you thought you were him. Don't do that. Don't do that. Here's what I keep talking about. He's facing the basket. He beats any potential double on the strong side, and you can't double off the Maxi in the corner. You got to observe the spacing here, okay? Maxi makes the entry, and Brooklyn will not double off him. Although Harden only temporarily occupies Mikhail, he knows he's on that wing. So Embiid dribbles into where he knows he has space, and even though Mikhail doubles, he's forced to retreat when Embiid faces that wing. That's a crazy-ass bucket, bro. This is always my favorite part. Keep in mind what we talked about from that first half, and watch it come full circle. Jalen enters the rock, he cuts, Curry doubles off the cutter, which means the corner has to tag him. But who's in that corner? Game two is behind us. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Thank you for your time. Please continue to show love across all platforms. I appreciate it. And stay with me through the postseason, my friends. Stay safe. Stay solid. We'll talk this weekend.